Kickstarting Governance, President Bola Tinubu meets service chiefs, leadership of the National Assembly. He has made it very, very clear that all the security agencies must comply with the demands of coordination. Increase in petrol pump price, Nigerians working to reduce excessive spendings. I don't have any other option because this is the only means of feeding my family. The government should look into uh, the transportation angle. Plus, Central Bank of Nigeria debunks claims of Naira devaluation. I was fighting fires uh, this morning from a false report that uh, sort of suggested uh, movement in the exchange rate. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Hingino John Adams joins us from Lagos. And you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live or any of our social media handles displayed on the screens. President Bola Tinumbu has met with service chiefs and the Inspector General of Police, Musbao Danwahab, reports that the meeting at the State House was the first on this critical sector between the new president and the heads of security agencies led by the Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Irabo. Day three for President Bola Tinubu in office since inauguration. It is time for briefing and debriefing on another critical sector, security. And so, the service chiefs, as well as the Inspector General of Police, will brief the new Commander-in-Chief on his number one item on the Renewed Hope Manifesto. Yeah, Mr. President believed warm handshakes would be good enough to commence the very first meeting apparently aimed at consolidating efforts on this sector and perhaps infusion of some new ideas for a lasting solution. And after about two hours of an indoor meeting, some new hope emerged. Well, the expectation of Nigerians is that security will be improved upon. And of course, the mandate, the direction which Mr. President has given, is uh, anchored on that. And that's what we will be working on to see that we strengthen the existing um, um, you know, security situation. And uh, for Nigerians to um, you know, have a better environment where they can um, undertake their you know, undertakings every day. So this is precisely uh, what um, we've gone out from Mr. President. The mandate is given, uh, which we're going to work on uh, going forward. There is also a new impetus and philosophy inside to drive the hope. The President has revealed that in moving this country forward, he needs the security agencies to redouble their efforts and he's also pointed out that his own philosophy is one of contemporary security measures dealing with the requirements of the time. And very important to the Commander-in-Chief is that national security has to be coordinated with one purpose of securing the nation. He has made it very, very clear that all the security agencies must comply with the demands of coordination, with the demands of frequent consultations, and also timely reports which must be acted on. He is going to embark on a lot of reforms in terms of our security architecture, is going to take a closer look at our misfortunes in the maritime domain, focusing particularly on the issues of oil theft. 
Mr. President has clearly stated in his manifesto that national security is the bedrock of a prosperous and democratic society with emphasis on fighting terrorism, banditry, kidnapping and violent agitation. And Nigerians are certainly yearning for a greater improvement in this regard. From the State House, Muspal and Wahab NC News. And President Bolatinubu is hoping for an understanding and cooperative National Assembly to work with when the 10th Assembly is inaugurated next week. Senate President Ahmed Lawan and Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila say ensuring that is their priority as they met with President Bolatinubu officially for the first time at the State House, Abuja, here again is Musbah and Wahab. The relationship between the outgoing Ninth Assembly and former President Muhammad Buhari has been arguably described as the most cordial in the current republic. We've all seen the benefits of a cordial relationship, um, not necessarily in bed together, but cordial relationship. We've seen the benefits in the last four years. Such good-natured relationship would certainly be one of the aspirations of a new Hemsman to deliver his desired policies and programs. The President may have found the right agents and the Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives to facilitate a harmonious relationship with the incoming National Assembly. Uh, you cannot uh, overemphasize the necessity and imperative of working uh, in a very cordial uh, manner between the executive and the legislature. So we had all those discussions just to ensure that um, uh, when the leadership of the national, the new leadership of the national assembly will emerge, that um, the what will inform the uh, the emergence will be uh, the national interest, the interest of the national assembly itself, the legislature, uh, to be together, uh, and therefore everybody uh, matters in this process. There are currently rumors of appointments of Speaker Femi Bajabiamila as the Chief of Staff to the President. But Senator Lawal, who described it as just a wave of speculations yet, however believes that would be a perfect fit if confirmed. I pray that that comes to pass and uh, if that happens, uh, Mr. President would have uh, made a very wise choice, wise decision. Uh, at this moment you need uh, a Chief of Staff that has uh, very vast experience uh, in, in the area of legislation, in the area of uh, uh, cooperating with the executive arm of government, which the speaker uh, spearheaded from the House. Thank you very much. Consultations also continue with the president as the prospective members of the 10th National Assembly, just so for positions as presiding officers. From the State House, Musbal and Wahab, NT News. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa, has also met with President Ahmed Bola Tinubu at the presidential villa in Abuja. A statement by the head of media and publicity of the commission says the meeting is the EFCC chairman's first official engagement with the president. The meeting was to afford the anti-graft czar the opportunity to brief the president on the state of the fight against corruption and his recent visit to Saudi Arabia, where he signed a memorandum of understanding with the Oversight and Anti-Corruption Authority of Saudi Arabia in a bid to strengthen international partnerships to address the challenges posed by corruption. In the meantime, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is investigating the former governor of Ikiti State, Coyote Fayemi. A source from the commission disclosed that the ex-governor arrived the Lorry Zonal Command of the commission at about 10 o'clock this morning, June 1st, and has been quizzed over allegations of misappropriation of funds to the tune of about 4 billion naira during his tenure as governor. The House of Representatives has for the second time this week supported the federal government's decision on subsidy removal. The House also went a step further by suggesting the removal of subsidy on all petroleum products in Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. The latest resolution by the House is as recommended by an ad hoc committee set up in June 2022 to investigate the petroleum subsidy regime in Nigeria 
from 2013 to 2022. Between 2013 to 2016, the subsidy payment made by the federal government stood about 4.4 trillion naira. House members, while considering the report, adopted all 11 recommendations, one of which advised the federal government to immediately design and implement measures and palliatives, such as providing alternative and cheaper means of transportation across the country. The House suggested that a representative from the Nigerian Navy be provided for all agencies involved in lifting of crude to enable physical assessment and documentation. Members agreed that all provisions contained in the Petroleum Industry Act be implemented. A motion from Francis Agbo calling on the federal government to declare a state of emergency on illicit drug was adopted. By the tragic phenomenon now affects all strata and demographic groups of our country. It is pertinent for government at all levels, the organized private sector and the family unit work closely to combat this menace. Two reports from the House Committee on Basic Education in relation to rehabilitation of all unity schools and ensuring recruitment of qualified and registered teachers in Nigerian schools were adopted. Well over 70 percent right now are neither qualified nor registered and this is why we find all kinds of quacks. In my own constituency we have schools where persons with uh, four credits, three credits are teaching children and they really don't know what to deliver. Eight bills were read for the third time and passed while bill to establish Nigeria Institute of Plant Protection was among those considered as the committee of the whole from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. And Nigerians are activating their resilience mode and devising ways to mitigate excessive spendings following the increase in the pump price of petrol. Lydia Samson was out to speak with a cross-section of Nigerians. She returned with some divergent views. The tension occasioned by long queues at petrol stations has disappeared in most petrol stations visited. Uh, I don't have any other option because this is the only means of feeding my family. I, have, I will continue to buy it. I can't start to... My own opinion is the government should look into uh, the transportation angle, bringing down uh, buses all over the nation, why I like it? Let's do our work forever. But this one is from Jonathan. We are going to remove it. We are to remove it up to now. But as this one, I remove it. I still love it. Though the subsidy removal discussion is still on, with more Nigerians understanding the benefits of the removal, others are calling for more awareness creation on the issue. Uh, this cashless policy is tough. There are a lot of people, they will put 1,000 naira in their pocket even more than one week. Nigerians, we can easily adapt to things, but... There should be an awareness. Everybody will be aware. This is what government wants to do. Let's government, as, as I've removed the subsidy already, mm. let them start to plan to build up refineries. The deregulation of the petroleum downstream is a reality that has come to stay. And though there are challenges, many Nigerians believe the good news is that it's kind of a drive in and out now for the queues they've battled for ages seemingly are gone. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Well, joining me now to better situate the petroleum subsidy removal is the group CEO of the NNPC Limited, Malam Mili Kiari. Uh, thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. Thank you very much. Right, so you're the <coughs> NNPC Limited, uh, maybe we should say the then uh, corporation, had always been in the eye of the storm talking about subsidy removal. Now, let's begin with the actual amount channeled to subsidy and the rationale. Thank you very much, Cyril. Uh, the easy thing to see is that, you know, subsidy costs this country average of 400 billion naira every month in the current dispensation of pricing. That means that, you know, uh, every litre you buy, is subsidized by at least 250 to 300 naira on every liter. Uh, this is clearly unsustainable 
and, and because it is unsustainable, we have gotten to a point today where we cannot just afford it anymore. Remember that the Petroleum Industry Act, you know, was clearly stated that by 17th of February 2022, there should be no subsidy on petroleum pr products of any sort. And of course, February 17, uh, February 17 came and passed, and we are unable to uh, pull the trigger. And of course, uh, this is also understandable. Governments can always spend on their citizens, and the, the National Assembly and government, in their wisdom, you know, provided for subsidy in 2022. And also up to the half of 2023. But the reality also is that even as provisions were made, there were no funding of this subsidy requirement. That means NMPC was carrying the burden of this subsidy since the beginning of 2022 up to this date. And it has gotten to a point where this company, this corporation, which is now a private company, can no longer bear it. The Federation is unable to pay its bill on, on subsidy. And therefore, ultimately, because this is impacting on the cash flow of the NNPC, it is impossible to continue to bear this. And what Mr. President merely did is to bring into effect the provisions of the law and the very reality that we do not have the resources to continue to carry this. This is really what happened. It's not really about whether the corporation was doing it in the eyes of the storm in the past or not. But the reality today is that NMPC is a very private company. It is supposed to pay taxes and royalties as every other company and also declare dividends to its shareholders. In this case, the overwhelming Nigerian uh, population. So, so definitely, uh, this is an unavoidable situation. Uh, because you can't give what you don't have. This is really, this is really where we are. All right. Well, what are the visible changes that are expected, uh, especially with regard to market dynamics? First and foremost, you know, the demand and supply dynamics will play out. Pro petroleum products, all petroleum products, actually priced at international prices. Uh, this market shifts every day. It can go up. It can come down. Also, by pulling out the subsidy, you're actually triggering competition into the market. And therefore, efficiency becomes critical. Companies will compete in the areas of efficiency. You will see private sector people bringing in product into this country. Even whenever we have production uh, domestically, while the market policy will still play, you will see competition among players. And com consumers will be protected because... Uh, market policy will now come into play. Therefore, the changes we will see is that there will be stability in pricing, stability in supply because you will have many players in the market. And more than anything else, you will see the value that would have gone into individuals' benefit you know, in terms of you know, customer uh, uh, marketing companies, individuals you know, taking advantage of this regime to take some of these uh, benefits to the advantage will vanish. And therefore, resources will now be available for better use by government the sub-nationals, local governments, state governments, and even the federal government will have more resources in their hand so that they can deliver better value to them. So this will become very, very obvious in a very short while. And I believe that the Nigerians will, will be benefit from this. There will be short-term pains, you know, no doubt about it. Whenever you have prices increase, you know, you will have, you know, issues around inflation, issues around ability to even meet basic demands. But I know that the market will stabilize this. Those effects will minimize Consumption patterns will change, and government will create more resources, more jobs, and ultimately you will see the benefits coming on the table. Is that going to happen tomorrow? Maybe not, but you will see the immediate benefits in, in terms of you know, alleviating the, the, the pains that will come to people. I know I'm aware that government is taking steps to ensure those pains will be relieved in the short term and in the long term. But overall, and I believe that you know, this action that government has taken or the reality that has done on by the provision of the law will translate into taking out those value that today i'm sure you may be aware of cyril that in very many locations in the country today no one is enjoying the the control price of petroleum the regulated price of petroleum price. in reality it doesn't happen in many parts in the southeast many of the border states where access to this is difficult across the country you will see that when you leave the major township you cannot see those prices being enjoyed by the ordinary people today the ordinary people are taking two hits one is the government is subsidizing imports, and secondly, the value of that subsidy is actually going to individual benefit. And I think the borough, when you pull all this together, at the end of the day, the less privileged, the vulnerable will actually be the ultimate beneficiary. Of course, you know, there will be disproportionate sharing of pains because mm -hmm. uh, what those who don't have will have difficulty meeting some of their basic requirements. But other than that, in the long term, the overall beneficiary will be the ordinary people. 
Well, just today, the House of Representatives uh, is asking for removal of subsidy from every other petroleum product. That presupposes that uh, apart from petrol, uh, other products have been subsidized. Now, the question is, is this. How will the NNPC Limited navigate uh, this proposed transition to a subsidy-free market? And uh, what role do you see the company playing in this? Uh, first and foremost, you know, as by virtue of the position we have found ourselves today, there is no subsidy on any petroleum product today now. So it's all over, and, and this is the reality that we are, we are facing today. So all other products, uh, petro, uh, uh, diesel, kerosene, and all other products, of petrol, they are actually not subsidized. So we are happy that the National Assembly has taken this position, and it has actually come to at the right moment uh, in, our, in our country. Now, secondly, what do we do to make sure that uh, this is sustained? First and foremost, you know, the market will determine the prices going forward. There will be competition. And for NMPC, you know, it's not what we would like to do. Even by law today, uh, once this subsidy regime uh, becomes established, others are able to bring in petroleum product into the country. By law, we cannot actually continue to be the sole importer of petroleum product because you are only limited by the anti-competition law to 30% of every market that you do. So you don't create any monopoly. And naturally, NMPC will exit this space and it will continue to be a supplier of rice. Well, yes, we agree by law, we will do this. But you see more players in the market. We are taking a very clear step to ensure that supply is available today until the private sector is able to come into play. And this is not distant away. I, I'm sure that you are aware, Mr. President, has said there will be uniformity of uh, FX rates in the country. Once that happens, you know, uh, commercial people, you know, trading companies will now have the confidence to bring in product into the country. There will be more inflow of foreign direct investment. That means you'll have more dollars in our system or other currencies, other currencies, and ultimately you will see a very stable market where consumers will be protected by virtue of provisions of the law and also the market forces now take control of what we are doing. All, all right, on a final note, quickly, um, uh, many Nigerians are well, at a loss for words at this point in time. So what assurances are you giving? Are you saying, are you sticking out to say we won't see the scarcity anymore and that the queues have finally disappeared? Very often the biggest source of our troubles in, in this country around uh, petroleum fuel scarcity is actually demand and supply issues, logistics. And I know that many things have been done at this moment to show, ensure that those disruptions that happen as a result of disruption to the supply chain vanish. Now, once you have a regulated environment, you have the regulated environment where others can bring in product into the country, you will have more supply, more certainty, and also so market is no longer regulated and simply means that you, know, you will have more supply, more distribution, more efficiencies. And I believe that, you know, issues of WLQ, except something, a force major that we cannot foresee happens, right. I believe that it will be a thing of the past. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, Mele Kulukiari, Group CEO of NNPC Limited, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much, Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll take a short break now. Network News continues in just a moment. You have to move from the point where you protect and defend your religion to a point where you also recognize the rights of the other person, of the other religion, and protect it. So if I am protecting my own territory and my own people and trying to emphasize their rights and protect their rights, I should also be thinking about how to protect the rights of the others. Both Islam and Christianity recognize and defer to God and both recognize the temporariness of the life of this world and that ultimately we all go back to God for the day of reckoning when everybody will render an account of his life on this temporary abode. Everyone here has achieved the most, but things are about to get messy. Welcome to the house! If it hasn't been resolved before we walk into that room, we are going to blow up. Destruction. <laughs> it has turned into a war zone. 2K thing, you still couldn't keep it. I will smack you. You better stop, you're gonna get stabbed. Can I have more champagne, please? Are you a dealer in cars, jewelry, 
precious metals and stones and luxury goods? Are you into real estate or are you an estate agent, surveyor, valuer, developer or broker? Are you into the hospitality industry, luxury business or are you a mortgage broker, tax consultant or an accountant? Do you have a supermarket, pools betting and consulting or construction company? If you have, go and obtain your certification from the Special Control Unit against Money Laundering, SCUMOL, and be free to do your business within the ambits of the law. SCUMOL has the responsibility to monitor, supervise and regulate the activities of designated non-financial business and professions, DNFBPs, across the country. Please note that the SCUMOL certificate is not a guarantee of legitimacy of any business. To register, visit www.scumol.org. For collection of certificate, visit any EFCC office nearest to you. Remember, registration is free. SCUMOL, securing Nigeria's business environment. This message is from Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. His Excellency, the Senate President, Senator Ahmed Lawan, and Speaker, House of Representatives, Fermi Bajia Diamila, invite the general public to the commissioning of the National Assembly Mosque. The ceremony is scheduled to take place on Friday, the 2nd of June, 2023, at the premises of the National Assembly Complex at 12 noon. The mosque project was funded by Muslim senators, Muslim members of the House of Representatives, and Muslim management staff. Announcer, Senator Ibrahim Shikaru, Chairman, Mosque Construction Committee. Looking fresh for your dates? Get even fresher with Close Up. New Close Up Triple Fresh Formula. It cleans deeply, fights 99% of bacteria, and cools intensely. Keeping you protected and fresh. Protected and fresh. Protected and fresh. Let's take a picture. Protected and fresh. Still fresh. Still protected. Feeling cool and protected. All day confident to get close. Oh, yeah, take me close. You close up triple fresh formula. Thanks for staying with us. The Nigeria Labour Congress is calling on the public to disregard stories circulated in the social media space, claiming the Congress would commence a protest action against the increase in the pump price of petrol tomorrow, Friday, 2nd of June. A statement issued by Head of Information and Public Affairs, NLC, Ben Sinupra, says even as organized labor is outraged by the increase in price of petrol uh, that would bring untold hardship to ordinary Nigerians, the union has no plan to start any action tomorrow. The statement notes that Congress is only meeting tomorrow to look into the issue and decide on the next line of action, promising to keep Nigerians updated on the outcome. And the Central Bank of Nigeria has debunked claims it readjusted the Naira's rate to the dollar just as it collaborates with the fiscal authorities to meet the demands of the times on the economy. Lia Katumba Batunde was at the Fiscal Liquidity Assessment Committee retreat in Abuja where agencies are engaging themselves with a view to responding adequately to economic crisis. Lia Katumba Batunde has the rest of it. The coronavirus pandemic and its effects might have waned, but certainly it has essentially changed the face of digital transactions and perhaps forever. These changes are, however, not without risk to monetary and financial system stability. Our banks needed to respond to what you might call the good aspects of that you know, change, because a lot of people actually took to cryptocurrencies, even here, in our beloved fatherland. Of course, we kick them out of our banking system because the opacity of the system is still a threat to financial system stability. Nigeria's official exchange rate tops conversation this new month. I was fighting fires uh, this morning from a false report that uh, sort of suggested uh, movement in the exchange rate. The Fiscal Liquidity Assessment Committee flag retreat is themed post-pandemic fiscal stress and monetary policy management in the digital age. And this gathering is a synergy between the fiscal and monetary authorities to coordinate response to economic challenges. The fiscal arm of government also pays close attention to the thriving fintech sector to boost tax collection, aid targeted social interventions, improve debt management and facilitate international trade among 
several others. Which stress means that we're having need for higher expenditure or expenditure outlets, but revenue inflows are leaning. The same thing also on the central bank side, while we are also looking at our monetary data and managing liquidity, we're also mindful of how that is not impacting on growth, on the banking sector stability. And the most critical part of it now is that digitalization. The monetary authorities say they would continue to implement measures to support the federal government's efforts to manage the economy, address liquidity challenges, and ensure people-oriented programs. In Abuja, Leah Katumbaba today, NTA News. The presidential candidate of Labour Party, Peter Obi, has tendered certified true copies of forms EC8A electoral documents from six states at the presidential election petition court alleging electoral malpractice in the conduct of the February 25, 2023 presidential election. The legal team of the respondents, however, objected to the admissibility of the documents. Austin Ayebe of our Judiciary Desk reports. Form EC8A is also known as the Statement of the Poor Resort from Polling Units. A Thursday sitting of the Presidential Election Petition Court, Counsel to Peter Obi and Labour Party, Awa Kalu, turned out these funds from six states. These include those from 23 local government areas of Benue, 18 local government areas of Cross Rivers, 21 local government areas of Niger State, and 20 local government areas of Oshun State. Others include 16 local government areas of Aikiti and 15 local government areas of River State. Respondents counsel vehemently opposed the admissibility of all the documents tendered and admitted in evidence in the petition by the court, saying they will give their reasons before or during their final written addresses. The court adjourned till Friday for Peter Obi's legal team to tender more documents or call more witnesses. To us too, that INEC would be attacking their own documents, processes that emanated from them. Meanwhile, hearing of the petition filed by Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party also continued with three witnesses testifying on behalf of the petitioners. All of them were state PDP INEC accredited agents in the 25th February 2023 presidential election who adopted their written statements and cross-examined. They held on to their allegations of manipulation of election results claiming the witness alteration of results in many polling units and we are either forced to sign results sheets or decline to sign at the state coalition centers. Respondent counsel countered their stand by putting it to them that it was not possible for them to witness what happened in all the polling units deposed to in their statements within the election period. The presidential election petition court adjourned to 2nd June 2023 for continuation of hearing of the petition. From the Court of Appeal in Abuja, Austin Anyebe, NT News. President Bola Tinubu has congratulated governors who recently emerged as leaders of the Nigeria Governors Forum and the Progressives Governors Forum. The president, in a statement, felicitates with the Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak on his emergence as the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum and the Imo State Governor Hope Uzodimma on his election as chairman of the Progressives Governors Forum. He also congratulates Governor Shei Makinde of your state as deputy chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum and Kaduna State Governor Ubasani on his election as deputy chairman of the Progressives Governors Forum while tasking them to use their tenures to advance the peace, unity and socio-economic development of the country and collaborate with his administration to release the renewed hope agenda, President Tinubu adds that their new leadership positions as given by their peers is a testament to the trust and confidence reposed in them. Human and infrastructural development were among the legacies to be remembered by the previous administration of uh, immediate past President Muhammadu Buhari. This was the view of the Nigeria Governors Forum on a thank you visit to the former president in his hometown, Daura. Husseini Suleiman reports. 
The thank you visit by Nigerian Governors Forum was in recognition of the leadership style of the immediate past president, Muhammad Buhari, who led Nigeria for eight years. The delegation led by Ogun State Governor Dapo Abiodun enumerated some achievements recorded by the former president, which transformed the nation. His principles of zero intolerance to corruption, his commitment to development of infrastructure, road, rail, bridges, are all there for us to see. His development of the agri sector, his job creation, um, food security. Today we are a net exporter of rice. Some members of the Governor's Forum highlight the achievement of Buhari's administration, which speaks volume to leadership's tie worthy of emulation. The former president, who was elated by the visit, expressed confidence in the present administration in uniting the nation for peace and development. So I thank you very much for traveling from all over the country to come and uh, have this uh, lovely lunch with me and uh, to say goodbye to me. Um, I have seen some of the governors smile, smile, it was that they are going away with me. Similar visit was paid by a delegation from Nasara State, led by the state governor Abdullah Isule. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria has cleared the air over what it described as a technical hitch necessitating a forced landing of the air carrier conveying Jigawa State pilgrims to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for this year's Hajj. A statement by Assistant Director of Public Affairs of the Commission, Fatima Sandosara, says the hitch was caused by uncontrollable turbulence as a result of heavy rainfall, forcing the aircraft to land temporarily in the Aminu Kanu International Airport in Kanu. The statement quotes Chairman of the Commission, Zikir La Kunli Hassan, assuring Nigerian pilgrims that nothing will hinder the smooth operation as all necessary arrangements against unnecessary delays have been provided. So far, more than 14,000 Nigerian pilgrims have been airlifted for the Holy Pilgrimage. Nasarawa, Benue and Plateau states have completed the airlift exercise and the pilgrims are already in the holy city of Medina. Five air carriers have been engaged for this year's Hajj. Time now for us to go over to Lagos and link up with Hingino John Adams for more news. Hingido. Thank you, Cyril. Recognizing and accepting the inevitability of the subsidy removal, Nigerians have urged government at all levels to swing into action by devising means to lessen the impact on other complementary goods in the country. This they believe will aid adjusting to the new pump prices. This is their reaction as they queued to buy fuel at different stations across Lagos metropolis. Larry Bile has details. Most fuel filling stations in Lagos have started selling the products to motorists at a price that reflects the subsidy removal market dictates. While few filling stations are yet to open up for business, others sell at 490 naira and 488 naira per litre. Motorists review that since subsidizing fuel can no longer be sustained by the government, then its removal is inevitable. But for me, oh, to remove this hostage is okay. Oh. They need to remove it. But it's a main time. This hostage is just a main time. I believe that the price has increased. Yes, I am not against the subsidy remover. Because we know how many billions of naira is going into subsidy every month. It is, but let the fuel be available to people to get. They call on the government to ensure that its effect on the economy is cushioned. The motorists, however, are not pleased with the way some fuel filling stations are operating since the price got affected. I would say most of us take advantage of situations, but then in this case, I understand because as a businessman, it's the law of demand and supply. I would not buy for 180 to sell for 185, for example, and then I know I can sell for 500 tomorrow, and I'll sell for 185, then borrow money to, to borrow money to buy stock to sell for 500. I understand the applied, but then I just feel they should just sell and let us leave. Apart from what my respondent, Mr. Solomon, talked about, another reason why there are a lot of queues in some filling station is that 
they are looking for stations that sells at a decent price and stations that have pumping machines that pump accurate liters into their cars. In Lagos, Larry Bileyi, NT News. A mobile phone used by the deceased student of Christland School, Whitney Adeniron, has been provided and tendered before Justice Oinda Mola Ogala of the Federal High Court, Lagos. Amaka O reports on this and other court proceedings in Lagos. At the resumed hearing, the third defense counsel, Olukayode Eniton, continued with his cross-examination. He aligned with the court ruling that the phone of the deceased be tendered before the court and password provided. Justice Onyi Damola Ogala overrode the objection from the prosecution counsel and director of public prosecution, Lagos State Babaji De Martins, request against the defense counsel stating that the exhibit be admitted. Justice Ogala, who is in custody of the phone, told the court that access to the phone by the defense counsels will be restricted to the Snapchat discussions. The case has been adjourned to the 8th of June 2023. In another development, the case involving Lagos State versus Dr. Olufemi Olaleye was heard simultaneously at the Sexual Offenses and Domestic Violence Court, Lagos, where one Olushola Oluwatuyi from a commercial bank appeared before the court and presented a bank document indicating that the defendant, Dr. Olufemi Olale, was removed as signatory to a joint account with his spouse. Justice Ramoni Oshodi admitted the documents. Efforts to get the bank official cross-examined by the prosecution counsel, Babaji Deboye, was opposed by the defense counsel, Lulusha Gunfabumi. The prosecution counsel requested that the bank official be recalled. This, the judge said, must be done with formal application within seven days. The case was adjourned till the 29th of September for final adoption of written address. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. That's it from here, but before we go on a break, do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. <music> Nigeria means unity. Nigeria means freedom to me. Nigeria means greatness to me. Nigeria is indivisible. There is nothing you can do. We all have to savage it together and learn to love each other. We are indivisible. As a border and a leader, I will always preach for peace and unity in this country because that is the only thing that will give us progress. Both tribes and tongues will differ. A brotherhood will stand. And it is the woman that does that. Where is Glory? Excuse me, ma'am. Hello! Oh, where is Glory now? I did hear you. Glory, don't go village. Tie all our customer abi. Everybody pay attention. See, now Glory located 10x. Now he might they take tension, my customers. Now he they dash me 10 times the credits when I load. Why even me double data join. Hey, yeah. yeah. Wait, so, so with one five they give all of us so you they enjoy up to 15,000 naira credit and data. And I say I never finish you. See, when I say we enjoy, if we not join Global Equity 10x, when I go get 1,000 naira welcome credit, you just carry your phone, dial star 777 ash. Finish. Glo, you don't win. On a CD here. Hello. Please, I'm looking for Glow. Please save now, Glow with the fine. Now, Glow with the go. Okay, so Enjoy 10 times the value of your recharge on Glow Barricade 10x. You also get 1,000 naira for calls and data and double data bonus on your subscription. Everyone here has achieved the most, but things are about to get messy. Welcome yeah. to the house! If it hasn't been resolved before we walk into that room, we are going to blow up destruction. <laughs> it has turned into a war zone. 2K thing, you still couldn't keep him. I will smack you. You better stop, you're gonna get stabbed. Can I have more champagne, please? Mommy, it is time for us to leave this old place. One of your earrings is missing. No one will find it. I'm not willing to take that chance. I have a big plan, man. What do you want? I want a senior position at the bar. If anything happens to me, go through the content of this envelope and check every single thing. It's done. No one will ever find out the truth.
back in Abuja. The question is, how's business going? Benny Adams will answer to that. Benny. Business is going well. Welcome uh, to business. Well, with the assumption of office of the new administration, the Securities and Exchange Commission has promised uh, readiness to aid in infrastructure development. The Director General of the SEC, Lamido Yuguda, expressed the belief that the Nigerian capital market, being an organized and specialized financial market that drives capital mobilization through domestic savings and foreign capital inflows, is well positioned for the realization of infrastructure objectives of the nation. Yuguda urged government at all levels to look towards the capital market for financing infrastructure investment and assured that the Commission is committed to protecting investors and creating a robust capital market that is instrumental to driving economic progress in the country. And take a look at the markets. Nigeria's equities recorded the third consecutive gain as investors cash out 21 billion naira. At the end of today's trading session, a total of 390.2 million shares in 7,722 five deals corresponding to a market value of 5.727 billion naira were traded compared with the previous trading day wednesday today's data shows 41 percent decline in volume 70 percent decline in turnover and 23 decline in deals the current market capitalization is 30.4 trillion naira access holdings had the highest volume of shares followed by united bank for africa and ftn coco processors well, that is Business News. Network News continues with Serial. Thank you, Benny. Now, cancer patients under the National Health Insurance Act can now have better care with improved initiatives to meet their health needs. This was part of issues deliberated on at a meeting with NHIA focal officers. Elizabeth Amori brings us details. A Lancet report on cancer in sub-Saharan Africa shows a major increase in cancer mortality from 520,348 in 2020 to about 1 million deaths per year by 2030. With this projection, there is an urgent need to curb the growing crisis in cancer mortality to reduce the burden of this disease and other ailments. The National Health Insurance Act is equipping focal persons, administrators, departments and agencies with requisite knowledge on the benefits of the scheme. To improve the satisfaction of our and the perception of our early. So we have decided to now say, okay, we'll brand them for NHS. So when you go, you see those drugs, you know the, where they are coming from, who is the manufacturer. Whether you are retired or you're still in service, your coverage is going to do what? To be on a continuous basis. And those are the work that is going on. The desk officers are expected to educate enrollees in their various MDAs on the reforms of the NHIA to reduce health burden. Elizabeth Omori, NC News. The Federal University of Transportation, Daurak, at Inner State, is expected to commence academic session before the end of 2023. This came to light during an inspection visit by the National Universities Commission and the Federal Ministry of Education as part of preparations for the university's takeoff. Husseini Suleiman reports. The establishment of University of Transportation in February for domestication of railway engineering and general transportation sciences in Nigeria. The visit is to supervise the available structures and facilities on ground. I'm impressed, I'm happy with the quality of the work with the facilities that are around, I can confidently say uh, they can take off. When we bring students to university, most of them will not be from this area, so at least there should be accommodation for them. And what we have seen is quite elating. And for the lecturers, we have what we call maybe transit accommodation for them, where they will be for the time being. It's quite beautiful, and I'm sure. Anybody that is housed there will actually feel at home. That's why in this uh, committee, we invited them, we include them in the committee, so that they will see what is on ground, so that by the time that what we call resource education visit, so that when we come for that visit, they, already, they are already aware 
of what is on ground so that they can advise the university properly on what and what to be fixed and what and what to be added and so that it can take off. The delegation also visited the Emir of Doros Fales to intimate the royal father of their mission. From Daura in Kazina State, Hussein Suleiman, NTA News. Time for another quick break. Stay with us. Nigeria means a lot to me. And Nigeria means peaceful cohesion. My country. Yeah, we continue to pray and then hopefully we will come to understand that unity. Unity of purpose. Unity of living together. Our ethnic beliefs and background and culture is our strength. Ever since the Amalgamation period of uh, 1914 to date, about 100 and nine years ago, the people of Nigeria live very peacefully with one another. I think diversity helps a lot to, uh, to enhance uh, robust development in Nigeria. All over the country, you know, you have so many ethnic groups, over 250. That is enough to tell you that this is a blessed country and, you know, that God has kept, you know, together as one individual entity. Slowly by sleeping with her husband. Can't believe you are showing almost no empathy to the death of your stepson. I was here when you buried your two wives. I tried to protect my father's honor. You will die. Do not want Santiago on that project. You hear me? Enough. Let's do worry you. You will be stepping down as governor of Lagos State. What? We'll invite you inside for dinner. <laughs> but unlike you, I don't make stupid decisions. Lead the former governor of Lagos State out of my presence. Sports now, Enugu Rangers beat Plateau United 1-0 to reach the final of the Federation Cup against Bendel Insurance, who edged out Worry Wolves 3-2 via penalties. On the day, the Niger Football Federation gave an assurance to televise the final. Ayo Diji Makinde has more on sports. Nigeria Football Federation is intensifying efforts towards attracting improved financial partnerships for national and international competitions. NFF President Ibrahim Guzol disclosed this in Abuja as efforts to improve the branding of the Federation Cup hit new heights. We have agreed that we are going to be, make sure that at least we have one of our international TV to cover the finals of the tournament in a couple with a lot of screaming that will go on. So there's going to be a lot of media activation. In another development, Flying Eagles have vowed to win the FIFA Under-20 Men's World Cup after Nigeria knocked out host Argentina 2-0 in the round of 16 at Estadio San Juan del Bat Centenario. The team, which received encomiums from the top echelon of the Nigeria Football Federation, secured the spot with goals from Ibrahim Muhammad and Halilu Sarki in the second half to power Ladan Bozo's team to the quarter-final. We feel comfortable and then we have that confidence within me and my teammates. If I dedicate my goal to our new president, Bola Ahmed, I dedicate my goal to him. Elsewhere, football legend Lionel Messi will play his last game for Paris Saint-Germain against Clermont this weekend with coach Christophe Gartier urging fans to give the Argentine forward a warm send-off at Parc de Prince. Messi has scored 21 goals and registered 20 assists for PSG in all competitions in a season where he led Argentina to the FIFA World Cup title and also won the Ligue 1 and the French Super Cup. Away from football, Emma Raducanu has caught ties with German trainer Sebastian Sachs, her eighth coach in two years. The former US Open champion has tried multiple coaches since Wimbledon in 2021 but failed to build a lasting relationship with any of them. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde, NTA News. 
The burial rights for the late National Welfare Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Sir Friday Wanuzi Wosu, began today, Thursday, June 1st, 2023, at his country home, Umahia Ubingwa, local government area of Abia State. A statement by his son, Pastor Chibu Zongwosu, says interment will take place on Friday, 2nd of June, at the same venue. Sir F.N. Wosu was a lawyer, a consummate politician, and was described by associates as a humble leader. He is survived by his wife, children, grandchildren, among other family members. And the family of late Wakombu Vange Chube of Stekucha, Mbanyong in Boko local government area of Benue State have announced the passing of their beloved husband, father, brother, uncle, engineer Isaac Wakumbo, the Mingiri chief in the early hours of Thursday, the first day of June 2023. He was 78 years. Late Isaac Wakumbo, a former executive director engineering of the NTA, is survived by his wife, Tabitha, children, and other relations. A statement by his son, Nsu Wakumbo, says burial arrangements will be announced by the family in due course. And that concludes Network News tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Cyril Stober. Good night.